Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros Podcast. We got another fruitful episode, exciting, full of nonsense, haberdashery, and tomfoolery. Uh, today's guest is Ian Smith. Um, you might remember him from the news. The story went viral. He is the defiant New Jersey gym owner um, for, I mean, dude, you uh, explain to the audience what exactly happened. Cause this, this one's a hard one for me. Like it, it's, it's hard to put in words cause it almost doesn't seem real what's going on. Yeah. It's, it's a good way of putting it. Um, all right. Let me, uh, let me give you the short version. Um, my business partner and I just like pretty much every other small non-essential business uh, in the country shut down on March 16th after uh, Emperor Murphy told us to do so. Emperor Murphy the being the governor, the governor of New, of New Jersey, Jersey, right? Yes, yes. Um, 14 days, slow the spread. Everybody knows the story. Uh, 14 days, very quickly approached two months. And uh, Frank and I made the decision that we were going to uh, we were gonna reopen. We had our own safety protocol that we spent two months figuring out because we weren't doing shit else for two months. Um, we announced it publicly. Um, it... it caught wind to Tucker Carlson. We went on and, and we made a statement that we were going to open nationally. We did so um, with the hopes that government would step in and say, hey, let's talk about this. Um, and they didn't. So we said that if there was no plan in place, then by May 18th, we were going to reopen. So we reopened to a couple hundred people in the parking lot, um, a line wrapped around the building and national media coverage on May 18th, which is exactly two months to the day of being shut down, mm -hmm. um, met with resistance pretty much from the get go. Uh, there were police in the parking lot. Originally those police were the local police, uh, which we had informed that we were going to open, you know, we didn't do this to blindside anybody. Um, they did not want any part of it. Governor Murphy, excuse me, Emperor Murphy decided that, um, if they did not come in and discipline us, that he was going to furlough the entire department for 60 days. So he threatened them with that. Uh, and he was going to bring the county in. So that's when our citations began. Uh, to date, we have 60 summons um, between Frank and I for opening. We are well above half a million dollars in fines. Uh, we lost our business license. We've had uh, an arrest. Uh, both of us have been arrested. One of our members have been arrested. Ten members have received citations. We have a health department shut down. We have a court order to shut down. Um, yeah, that's the short version. Okay, uh, great. We, I, yeah, because I, I what, what phase are you in right now? What phase is the state of New Jersey in right now? Are you allowed to be open? Are gyms allowed to be open? How How is that working out gym, now? Gyms are allowed to be open. So in August, um, after we were held in contempt of court for the third time, they were going to come and arrest us again. They had originally changed our locks, um, locked us out of the building. We picked the locks, went back inside. Uh, then they were going to come and change the locks again. So we took the doors off of the hinges and Frank and I camped here 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, till they came and arrested us. They boarded up our doors. We came back a couple days later, kicked them in, uh, and resumed business operations. And then late in August, they were going to come and erect a steel barricade. So we teamed up with a guy named Rick Maida, who is running for Senate against Cory Booker and designated our location as a, uh, a volunteer location or a rally point for him. Uh, so Governor Murphy couldn't close the doors uh, because political political activities are exempt from all executive orders. And if he would have closed our doors, it would have said uh, Governor Murphy, you know, shuts down GOP operation. Uh, so then he opened the gyms about three days later, but we didn't have a business license. So gyms are allowed to be open. There's all sorts of restrictions. You have to wear a mask at all times, stuff like that. We're currently being fined fifteen thousand dollars a day because we refuse to mandate masks. Um, and it, it's, it's looking like New Jersey's on its way to get shut back down. Governor Murphy keeps talking about a second wave. Uh, he's, he's targeting the cities right now, putting in curfews into place at like eight o'clock. So, um, gyms are open restaurants with indoor dining are open under major restrictions. You have, you have three industries dying in New Jersey, uh, indoor dining or restaurants in general, because there is no indoor dining or it's very limited. Fitness centers, um, they're closing left and right. And then movie theaters are his three sort of targets at this point. So right. we're open, but it, 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 we're open under very oppressive restrictions. Uh, and we are the only place that that said fuck off to those restrictions. And 
we're open full force. Now, I, I assume you're paying attention to the uh, to to courts and how they're ruling in other places. In September, a federal court in Pennsylvania ruled that uh, the the orders to limit the n- number of people that can gather in one spot, all the business closing stuff is all unconstitutional, right? Correct. And there uh, was a ruling, very similar one, also in Michigan. Right, but that was in the state Supreme Court. That's that's a Correct. different that's yeah. a different situation. So there's one in the federal court in Pennsylvania. The next step would be for it to go to a federal appeals court, right? One of the district, one of the nine district courts, Mm -hmm. and then the Supreme Court after that, right? That's how that would go. I'm I'm curious how this hasn't been elevated already to the 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 the, the next level to the district court or to the the reserve. Oh, god damn it! To uh, yeah, one of the nine district courts for review. Sure, and I I guess a follow up to to Dan's question is this: is it takes a lot of money uh legally to get those cases to that next realm of court system i'm imagining at this point um with the fines that you said you had that you probably don't have the means to do that um to take this to 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 the supreme court because that's a fun flirty thing that people like to say in the news or or you know they don't realize how difficult it is it is fucking impossible i'm a i'm a dude who's been through a shit ton of lawsuits um you know Every single movie we've done get, ends up getting sued by some fucking slapdick in, you know, some weird state or whatever. And uh, uh, you got to deal with it. And it is what it is. But um, it's very time consuming. It's costly. The other parties don't realize it as well, because then you end up counter suing. And then they were like, oh, shit, uh, my yeah. pro bono DUI lawyer or whoever this was, you know, who works in a fucking coal mine or something. Now they're I- I've got to pay to go to, to court. You don't say. Um, and those are for small cases. Right. This is a massive case. When you're talking about fighting the government, um, that is a ton of money because they have endless resources to come after you. Um, and they you use get, they uh, use their own they use our resources against us. Correct. I mean, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. They're Your own taxpayer money is what they're insane. using against you. Yeah, imagine that. How fucked up that is. Now, uh, you guys are getting fined fifteen thousand dollars a day. You said right, fifteen thousand four hundred ninety-seven dollars and seventy-six cents per day. And and how does that come? Does that come in just like a like standard mail, or <laughs> how does that so, show up? Uh, <laughs> so that fine originally started for being open. So the the way that they got that was uh, Governor Murphy has the New Jersey court system just in his pocket. Uh, particularly this one judge, Robert Lugie, who is the only judge that we are allowed to be in front of. Uh, I mean, the guy. What was that last name again? Can you repeat that? Lugie, Robert Lugie, L O U G. Yeah, you Lugie, exactly. Yeah, just, just uh, making sure that was a real name, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, total jack off. I mean, this guy's the absolute disgrace to the justice system. Um, he's nothing more than a lap dog. He's a he's a yes sir guy, kind of to Murphy. He's next in line to be the attorney general if if Murphy uh, actually makes it to a second term. So. Murphy's got the the court system just totally jacked up. We can't get out of state court into federal court because he's just he's got nine attorney generals on the case working right. against us. Uh, and there's 13 in New Jersey. So he's got three quarters of the uh, legal power of New Jersey behind this case. Right. But you don't you don't necessarily so, need to sue in state court anymore. Right. After that ruling in Pennsylvania in September, you can now go directly to, to federal court. We were we actually brought a, a case in front of federal court within uh, a week of when we were originally shut down right. uh, after reopening. And we got kicked out of federal court uh, by a judge named Robert Kugler. Mm. Um, and his reason for doing so was that we had pending criminal charges. Now, those criminal charges are directly related to the opening. Uh, and he did so knowing that it would tie us up in the state courts for at least a year. Right. Um, so it's it's I mean, it's a it's it's a dirty game. It it's is for sure. Really, really but th- things game. are things are different now. Right. I mean, you could drop your state suit if you felt like it and reopen a federal well, suit state, right the now. The state based suit on... is against us. Oh, no, the state that's suit is okay. against us. Yeah. yeah so... so we are trying to get into federal court. We have to resolve these criminal charges first. And all it is is postponement after postponement after postponement. They've they've totally perverted the. Uh, the judicial system with COVID, they, everything's, you know, for your safety. So there's no in court appearances, everything's over zoom. There's Mm -hmm. technical difficulties. Um, We haven't even said a word in front of a judge yet to date. You know, Frank and I have not even said, good morning, your honor. Uh, They have us in on these teleconference calls and they have us muted on their end. So we're just sitting there on the phone, listening to, um, to the court proceedings happen. Can't say anything. Um, So it's, 
it's an absolute shit show. Um, but we just kind of have to take our beating in state court until we can get to federal court. Um, and it's, it's just a process of, uh, we, we liken it to like a 12 round kind of Rocky match where, mm. you know, you're going to get your ass kicked in rounds one through 11. Uh, and then the final seconds of round 12, you're, you're going to get that punch that you need to kind of end it. And it's really at this point, it's about staying on our feet uh, and staying afloat kind of financially in order to get there. So we're working against these fines. They've tried to start seizing our personal assets. Um, and, and we're just fighting against that because we can get to we, we do have the funding to get to federal court and to the uh, Supreme Court. It's just a matter of will Murphy get his way and be able to seize our money uh, before then. And that's what he's actively trying to do. They've said it, they've said it inside of their uh, their motions in court. You know, they're they're asking the judge to essentially take our right to counsel away by bleeding all of all of our money dry. We've had the the, the sheriff's office send letters out to our banks and stuff like that saying that our our funds are to be seized what's the name of the sheriff um what 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 county are you in i'll find it it's mercer county um here he is office of the sheriff john a kemler k-e-m-l-e-r is the last name and that's mercer county um, and when you say seize assets are they are they showing up trying to take your cars um so what assets they, like are they taking the dumbbells out of there no they haven't they they've seized oddly enough they've only seized uh my paypal account um this is actually a letter from paypal here uh with a letter from the office of the sheriff and they drained my paypal account uh and wrote a check to the government uh, as of right now that's the only thing that they've successfully done um, okay i think that's because we're kind of fighting back legally because they're trying to not only hold the business liable, but they're trying to hold Frank and I personally liable for this money. So they're trying to pierce through the LLC. Yeah, that, that's where things get dangerous, right? Because it, yes, if, very if much. If so. they're able to pierce the LLC, um, then they're able to go after your houses and uh, cars and property and, and and whatever you own in this life. Yeah, and that's kind of what we're we're in the midst of right now. We're in the appeals process uh, in state court, and then we have another lawyer who's a financial expert and he's working to kind of block that at least until all of it is decided because what they're trying to do is they're trying to move on this money now mm -hmm. um, in order to, to, to paralyze us and, and not get us to round 12. Um, so it's just a matter of, I mean, we're constantly being hit with a barrage of shit. You know, they have nine uh, attorney generals and they're just throwing shit at us. So our lawyers are constantly scrambling. You know, if it's not one thing, it's the next um, and that's a tactic, by the way, like they're, they're very, doing that, on, much so. they're, they're doing that on purpose. And again, cause I, I've so. been in a bunch of these goddamn things and, um, uh, D Dan and I have always said, cause you know, we've had some, uh, buyout offers for the media company. Once somebody else owns this and we're able to say whatever we want to say, and they take care of the lawsuits and all that shit, we're going to break every NDA against all these lawsuits and, and, and just go yeah. on air, read off yeah. their names, what they did, uh, who they are. And, uh, it's a 10 point you know, 3 million people, and then enjoy that. Um, you can enjoy all of everything that comes along with that uh, because it's fucking crazy. Um, and then again, it's the time too. It's not just financially, but it's your time. Like I would imagine throughout the day, I, this is just a guess, just hearing your story right now, you're probably dealing with somewhere between 30 to 40 emails just pertaining to this, this lawsuit every single day. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's nonstop. We're on the phone with the lawyer, you know, an hour at minimum, you know, a couple times a week. Um, it, it just, it's, it's such a shit show that it's, it, it just becomes laughable. Like the only thing that, that you can do is laugh about it because the, the, the concept that this is justice and this is a fair and balanced system is a fucking joke. I mean, it's, and it, it, it's alarming because the, especially with these politicians and it doesn't necessarily have to be a politician. It can just be like a powerful corporation. They act exactly the same. Yeah. Um, they're, they're able to stomp on, you know, just regular people just by throwing money into the system. And, 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 right. you know, like the, the, the tactics you're talking about where they're just throwing six different motions at you at mm -hmm. once. And you're, you know, we've, we've played a lot of this on the defensive. Um, and now we're finally starting to go on the, the offensive, but it sucks. I mean, you're just, you basically just have your hands up trying to cover your face um, because they're just, 
they're just hitting you with thing after right. thing after well we can do a little bit more actually um because i don't give two fucks about mercer county or yeah. jack off kemler or whatever his name is uh I, I think it's interesting you talk about how the government in that case is using your own money against you essentially while trying to seize your money and assets uh yeah. th that's the, the and, and it illustrates the difference between the government and the people the government's power comes from a combination of what we give them and our complacence uh and our power comes from the fact that we have the numbers speaking of the numbers jack kemler's phone number is 609 989 six one two five if any of you guys out there want to give him a phone call and tell him he's a cunt is that at the uh police department that's a sheriff's number office yeah yeah no yeah. uh that is the sheriff's uh, office number and you can call until that phone number doesn't work anymore and i'll give you another one and if you can find an email address let us know we'll post that too this guy doesn't get to hide he's an elected official yep if he's going to try to abuse his power uh and then give me a minute and i'll get you uh, the governor's phone number as well as a matter of fact Mercer County Sheriff's Office has a Facebook page if you want to go check that out too and fuck with them over there. Great. What was that phone number one more time? I just didn't hear the last couple numbers. Yeah, it's, I'll give you the whole thing. It's 609-689-6125. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you that got involved in the Lindsey Graham thing, we did a couple, well, about a year ago, I guess. We had Lindsey Graham's office shut down yeah. uh, about a year ago. So I Mercer County should be pretty easy. You'd uh, think so, One yeah. would imagine. One You'd think imagine. so. Yeah, I, look, I don't think their phone lines can handle too much. No, yeah. no. A lot, a lot of people's can't. I'll, I'll call just to make sure, too. I'll add one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, just just pop in a call. Um, yeah, for sure. You know, that's but it, it's it's very interesting you say that because that's that's something that I've learned through this is. These people haven't been held accountable for their actions for so long that they've they've gotten so bold, mm -hmm. um, and it's it, it's it, it's partially our fault. It, it it's complacency. Mm -hmm. You know, we've we've let these people kind of um, do. We, we've trusted them with their jobs for far too long, and and what they've done is they buried themselves under layer and layer and layer of bureaucracy and legal bullshit that they they really think that they're untouchable, um, and they don't. They don't uphold the oaths that they take when they come in. I mean, sure, sure, there's some of them do, but an overwhelming number of these assholes, they get they get put into these offices and they they think that they've come into some position of power. Mm. Um, and what it is is it's the exact opposite. You know, they're they're supposed to be there to protect and serve the people, and and they get it flip flopped, and they've had it flip flop for a while. Well, particularly a county sheriff, like your job, the county sheriff's job is not to enforce the will of the governor. It is to it's to protect the constitution. It's, a, it's to protect the county. Yeah. yeah, like that's your job. You protect the county from all the. I mean, this is let's go back to old school sheriff days. It's to protect that county mm -hmm. from all the other counties, and you collectively protect all these counties from the state, and your state protects you from the federal government, and the federal government protects us from outside threats. That's how it's supposed to work, by the way. That's how it's supposed to work, but it doesn't. And when these guys get elected into these offices, even look the the county sheriff, right? It's still an elected position that you've got to go out and vote for every single year. It'll be on this ballot November 3rd. I don't know if he's up on November 3rd. He sure but is. He is not. He, is he? he uh, is. I'm not in Mercer oh, County. Wait. Mercer Mercer County is the uh, the county that Trenton, the capital, is in. We're actually located in yeah. Camden. Oh, Jack um, Kimler is a Democrat. Imagine that. What a, ah, what a you don't fucking say. So there's you a man. There's, a, there's <laughs> another police officer named Brian uh, Bucky and a, and a name. Boca Fuso. Boca Fuso? Yeah, Fuso? it is. That's classic Jersey right there. A little Boca Fuso. <laughs> a little Boca Fuso. What you'll notice about the difference if you go look at these two men, one is an old fat man. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other one Kepler, is- I'm assuming. Yes, obviously. And it's then, a kink. Uh, Bucky is, uh, is uh, a well-trimmed man in uniform. Hmm. He actually has a bunch of awards above a badge on his chest, and he's- uh, not wearing a fucking suit with a lapel pin on it. You're a fucking elected official, sure, but you're the sheriff. Yeah, dude. but his name is also Bucky. Um, and I, you wouldn't imagine a guy like Bucky to dress up that often. Well, he probably doesn't take a lot of shit either. Yeah, that's <sighs> what I was thinking. Probably I, I, don't take... know, I don't know guys named Bucky that are sheriffs that, that are going to roll over for the man. Right, yeah. Right it, now, he's, in, uh, uh, he's a detective um, in the greater New York City area. Washington TWP Police Department. So, Does he look like one of those guys that says you have the right to remain sexy when he walks up to women or no? I, he could be a stripper. <laughs> okay. Maybe, yeah. Okay. I mean, he's an older guy. He's probably in his uh, 
late 40s early 50s maybe but ah. he definitely looks like he could he could work a pole okay okay good to know um a lot of core strength are the let me ask you this so because your gym was shut down um what about the tanning facilities and laundry there because that's in in jersey let's face it that's top three that we're worried about right gym tan and laundry <laughs> are they all closed down too or are they open back up um probably not tanning I right i don't know i don't know about tanning i think tanning kind of falls under the same thing as uh as beauty salons yeah and they uh they opened a little bit before us same thing with oppressive you probably have to wear a face mask while you're fucking tanning you know knowing governor murphy yeah um, hey, is governor murphy up this year do you know that is he up for re-election uh, on the third he'll be next year oh the 20 uh, the 2022 20, yeah 2022 yeah man because because that's the issue with all of this um you know, it appears as if, look, Chicago is already shut down. Um, it appears as if New York City is, uh, is going to be next. Um, right now, Cuomo is trying to shut down individual boroughs. Uh, within those boroughs, the, the restaurants and businesses, much like yours, are being shut down um, due to COVID hotspots is what he's, he's qualifying those as. Yeah. Where it's like just the nursing like, homes. Like it, they're, the, they're the real hotspots. Exactly. What, what do they call them? That's the, a whole other story. The grandma killer? Is Cuomo the grandma killer? Is that what it is? Well, he's yeah, the, but he's he's uh, he's actually a distant second to to Murphy. Uh, yeah. We had we had the highest percentage of deaths in nursing homes in the country by far. I think we were somewhere around 11 percent of the people living in long term care facilities in New Jersey uh, passed away, and the closest was New York, and I think that was uh, at like three point eight percent. So we we pretty much tripled anybody else in the country. Fuck. So I, look, the elections on Tuesday, I tell you what, can we air this episode today? This is the frame, right? Yeah. I, let's air this today. Fuck it. Um, because I think me personally, and Dan and I have talked about this uh, for the last two weeks on this show. I think guys like you who have had their businesses shut down, who they've just fucking had it, right? Who traditionally might not go out and vote on November 3rd are going to go out and vote on November 3rd because they're sick of all of this bullshit that is going on with COVID and with the different governors and mayors and sheriffs and all this shit because it's, it's really funneling down to a local level. You can't, you can't expect uh, Trump to, to look after every goddamn town in the United States. This isn't Andy Griffith skipping rocks. Like You've got to, to, to rely on your elected officials locally have you like on, on in, in the Jersey streets here, have you heard people talking of like, man, I'm going to vote for Trump just because I hate this fucking bullshit that's going on. Like, I don't necessarily so, like Trump, you know, like, but I'm going to vote have, for him in New Jersey because New Jersey is, is typically blue. V- very much so. Um, through all this, I have met thousands of people, um, but even just using my gym as as one one example, we have a very diverse gym. We're right next to Camden, right next to Philadelphia. Um, we have the very ritzy suburbs to our uh, to the east. Um, middle class, we're kind of in a middle class town, so we have a, a wide range of people, um, all demographics. What do you want to look at? Socioeconomic, race, whatever. Mm-hmm. Almost every single person in this gym, regardless of how they have voted in the past or whether or not they have voted in the past, is voting for Donald Trump, um, and that's young, old, uh, black, white, everything in between. Um, you know, I, I've, I talk to people on a daily basis who are lifelong Democrats, uh, or, or people who had zero interest in politics before COVID came around. And I would say 99% of them are voting for Donald Trump. Um, and it's a, it's a beautiful thing to see, you know, and I, I get invited to a lot of, uh, New Jersey and Pennsylvania, New York rallies to speak and tell my story. Mm -hmm. And the energy and the enthusiasm at these places and the, and the diversity of people is absolutely incredible. I think, I think that part of this, this whole shit show that we've, we've been through with COVID, I think it has got a lot of people kind of rethinking their, their view on the world. And um, a lot of people are going to, I think we're going to see something pretty, pretty fucking awesome uh, uh, on Tuesday, Tuesday night. Yeah, yeah I, absolutely. I, I do too. And like, you know, it, it's, it's, funny you said that i thought the same thing when covid hit like there is restaurants and bars and gyms and things like that that i go to uh in my neighborhood like around where i live all the time i never took the time to get to know the fucking owners or the managers or anyone else but once this happened i did and it was like hey man like it was a place called whiskey creek um that was right next to my house this restaurant that i love me and my wife would go there with our children uh probably two times a week right I didn't know the owner. I went up and introduced myself and his name was Chris. And I was like, hey man, 
Uh, it's great to meet you. How are you doing? Um, what can we do to help? And I think a lot of people were doing that throughout the pandemic. And the more and more you get to know uh, your mom and pop places or your gyms or, or the, the managers or owners or all of these places, um, the bigger sense of community you feel and, and pride where you're like, man, I want to help these people these business owners out. I want them to thrive. I'm pissed off about what has happened uh, to not only me, but to them. And we're all kind of in this together. And uh, I think you're right. Uh, and I think with all of this early voting, we've had discussions on this of like, oh, the, the news is like, oh, there's so much early voting and it's traditionally Democrats. I don't think so on this one. I think a lot of these people are Republicans who are going in there and saying, fuck, man, I've been getting jammed up for six months by all these asshole officials. I'm gonna get my vote in there the second this fucking place opens because I want to, because I want to make sure that this does not happen for another four years. Are you getting the same sense? Yeah, I, I really, I think that for all of the hard work that the, that the left and this sort of whole push towards globalism, um, you know, cause it, it's coming mainly through the left, uh, at least these days, I think this whole push and plan that they've had is going to tremendously backfire in their face. Um, it's it, it it got a lot of people thinking, um, and I I've I've watched it unfold. Like you know, we have uh, we have members of the gym who I've watched go from fuck Trump or fuck all politicians to fuck the Democrats, and I'm voting for Trump. I'm voting early. Uh, I want my here in Jersey. I mean, we Governor Murphy's not allowing us to vote in person. I mean, that's how that's how deranged and wait, what desperate. is that real? Yes, absolutely. So, um, so did you have to mail in your ballot? So, I actually have it here. These are our ballots, um, and they they have made it intentionally confusing. Um, you can mail it in, which uh, I wouldn't fucking trust that to save anybody's life yeah and i, and I think um, you've missed the, the the cutoff date at this point right um yeah but you can you can turn your ballot in to a secure drop box up until um, election day yeah up until election day and then you can go to a polling place and actually vote in person but what they don't tell you is that that vote uh turns into a provisional ballot so that's to be counted last um so again, they've just perverted the whole system, but yeah. I and ex explain that to the audience because it, it's state by state, and it's it's completely different where we live. So explain it for the people in New Jersey because I think this will help. We're doing a huge election show mm -hmm. um, live for six hours on election night, but each state is entirely different, and they've got their own set of rules. Um, explain what that is because I don't believe I've ever heard that actually. Yeah, and it's 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 something that Governor Murphy just pulled out of his ass. Honestly, I mean it's. They want they 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 want the confusion and they want the frustration. You know, I was I was training a client of mine uh, yesterday, and um, she was panicking because she threw out her mail in ballot because she didn't realize that you couldn't vote in person. So she just tore it up, and um, she had to scramble to to go and 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 get another one printed out. So they've 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 again perverted this this very simple system where everybody shows up and they they go and, and vote to this complicated system where your vote will be counted in a different way if you show up at a polling place and try to vote traditionally. Um, you know, so if, if you're in New Jersey or if you're in one of these states that has mandated um, mail-in voting, do your homework. It does come with some paperwork. It'll tell you where you can turn your vote into a secure drop box. Um, so you'll, you'll have to show up at like your county, um, or your, your, your town center or whatever, you know, there, there, there's a bunch of places listed, but don't go in person and vote on election day and expect your vote to actually count because that is what they're depending on. They're, they're, they are depending on the confusion. I think that what we're going to see is an absolute uh, beating um, of, of Joe Biden on election night. And then they are going to try to drag it out and contest it and go kicking and screaming into 2021. I, I, that, that's what we believe as well here on this show. I, I think it's, Donald it's Trump. It's crystal clear. Yeah, I, look, I think Trump is going to win the electoral college that night. Um, the Dems won't won't concede. They'll say, "Oh, the mail-in ballots, the mail-in ballots." It'll go on through probably Thanksgiving, you know, three weeks or whatever, and then uh, then they'll bitch about it for four more years, and that'll be their Russia. 
That'll be the Russia for them for the next four years. So Me, what do you, what do you we'll see civil unrest in the process. We'll probably see another glorified police shooting Yep. Uh, here, here, right across the river in Philadelphia. You have chaos every single night right now. Um, and you have the governor of, of uh, Pennsylvania, Tom Wolf, still calling it peaceful protests. You know, it's you're going to see a lot more of that as well, especially in these Democrat run cities. I believe there were 90 uh, police officers injured during that civil unrest during that peaceful protest, right? Yeah, yeah, there always is, isn't there? Um, yeah, and there was there was uh, twelve looters shot by other looters, which you know BLM all the way. Um, a bunch of black businesses destroyed in the process. They had an interview. Uh, Jorge Ventura, uh, if you guys know who he is, he's a, a, a junior reporter with the Daily Caller. He's one of these guys that's always on the ground. Uh, he covered the events um, and. You know, these people, they're, they're just, they're, it's the same old song and dance. They're pulling up in U-Hauls, uh, very clearly organized, walking into these um, sort of powder kegs and just blowing them up. Um, and I think you're going to see quite a bit of that uh, come November 4th, 5th, and so on. Okay. Uh, well, look, um, we, we have some sponsors here that, that actually pay for the show to be on the air. I know it's fucking crazy, but uh, we'll get to those real quick. And then I, I want to ask you, um, about uh, w- what you're planning to do with these walk-in mail-in votes that you have here and, and what other people should do in the state of New Jersey. Uh, first and foremost is ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Finest mattresses in the land if you're a member of the military or first responder. Um, a teacher or work in the government, you get 30% off. Uh, that's every single day. Now, um, if you are a regular dum dumb civilian like myself, uh, you get 30% off of bundle packages, and that, that goes through October, so you only get a couple days left of it. You can uh, bundle your sheets and pillows and all that stuff back together, uh, and then use a 36-month pay-as-you-go, no-interest program with that at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros, and it, uh, it is the, the, the finest mattress in the land. Uh, we're lucky to have these guys, and uh, again, like, like you were talking about, these senseless cop shootings, um, shit, man, at least they're always given police uh, 30% off there at ghostbed.com. Well, police, forward slash drinking bros. Firefighters, firefighters, and everything EMT, else. Yes. Yes. nurses, teachers, you know, the people who get paid bullshit. All of the first responders. And are asked to do fucked up shit. I would, I would consider uh, a teacher to be an, uh, a social, a sociological first responder. Mm-hmm. Like that's one of the first people outside of your immediate family that you learn how to be a good or bad person from. Right. You learn conflict re- resolution, all that shit. It's really important. Nurses obviously work their asses off. They always take care of the people that take care of us. Right. That should be a pretty fucking easy maxim to live your life by. Take care of the people that take care of you. Seems simple, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it never is, is it? No. It never is. Uh, no. And that's not a political statement, by the way. No. It's not, it shouldn't be a, considered a political statement to say we should take care of the people that are taking care of us. Right. I uh, never is. Uh, say, hey, since you're a gym guy, we've got uh, buyraycon.com forward slash drinking bros. Headphones. Finest headphones in the biz as far as wireless go at a reasonable price. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, you can go and spend $1,000 on, on Beats by Dr. Dre and all that other bullshit. Or you can get some wireless headphones uh, in a little tiny box that recharge, lasts up to six hours. And the bass is unbelievable. Yeah, in these they get things. the best bass. Yes. Of uh, all the headphones that I own, they have the best bass. By it, far. It comes in handy listening to us, too, because there's a very rich timber to both of our voices. Oh, very rich. Yeah. Very rich. Um, a lot of people orgasm, by the way, Ian, uh, mm-hmm. when they listen to these two voices yeah. together. You put um, one headphone in your ear and the other one in your, uh, in your butt. In your beehole. hole I don't know where it goes. <laughs> yep. Let, that, let yeah. that vibrate a little bit. Get a little uh, ASMR uh, pumping through your uh, prostate. And uh, look, you'll be coming in 30 seconds. Um, that's not guaranteed by Raycon.com forward slash drinking. Bros, They've asked us not to make medical claims at all. And that so technically is a medical claim. You can't so. make a medical claim. But we can tell you to go and buy the finest headphones wireless in the biz. Go to buy Raycon.com forward slash drinking bros today. Um, with that URL, they'll, it'll knock it down. It's like 15% off down to like 65 bucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's pretty cheap and they fucking last forever. Um, gigantic fan of those guys. And uh, last but not least, Anthony. Is this going up today? Yeah, it's going up today. Buy, uh, Pick one. KillCliffCBD.com. Yeah. Are, you, are you a CBD guy? I am a CBD guy. I'm also a THC guy. Damn. <laughs> so, <laughs> look, you're talking to the right people, hombre. 
Talking to the right people. Um, Kill Cliff CBD. Look, they're, they've been in the workout world forever. Uh, CrossFit and all those guys. This yep. is the only name you can trust in drinkable CBDs these days. Go to KillCliffCBD.com. 25 milligrams of CBD in every single can. Four amazing flavors. Uh, strawberry, grape, uh, mango, and orange kush. You will not piss hot on a drug test. There is no THC in these cans. So if you're out there and you got to take a drug test, uh, don't worry about it. Or you can sue the shit out of Kill Cliff. Yeah, um, or if you do not have to take a drug test boom you can just add thc into your body some other way goddamn right uh, like dan is yeah. uh, it's a nice i don't know if you can see it. it's a nice foggy haze here on this yeah. side here uh yeah. go, go to killcliffcbd.com today promo code drinking bros 20 percent off and free shipping that is a big big deal over there and uh we love those guys i fucking order cases of it all the goddamn time i drink a can every night i drink the grape last night um so i want to ask you that that ballot you were holding up do you have to go and stuff that into a ballot box on the day? Is that, is no. that the? I mean, if you if you do that, your vote will not count. So so uh, when is that? It when won't is that? Count immediately. When is that due by? Count. Um, up until before election day. So and you have to go to one of their designated locations mm -hmm. to do it. If you if you do it, yeah. If you put it in a polling place okay. on election day where you know it would make the most sense to vote it will be counted as a provisional ballot okay um, so that means it'll be counted last um and it will probably never be counted at the uh, at the rate we're going here in new jersey so anybody who's uh who's in one of these states that's trying to push the mail in vote uh, make sure you read that paperwork the uh the drop box locations are on there that's where you want it to go uh, it has to be in by election day. Got it. Uh, so when are you popping yours in there, Frank? Because we're, we're, or Ian, we're, uh, we're three days away here. On the way home today. On the way home today. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. Um, we, I got a weird question for you. Uh, on that sure. ballot, who's listed first as president uh, to vote for on there? And that, you know, that, that was actually something funny uh, that Frank and I were wondering because Frank lives in a, a different county than I do. And on mine, Joe Biden is the first choice no here, way. and then Trump is here. But then on uh, on his, it's the opposite. So I don't know how they count these things, but it looks like a fucking scantron to mm. me. Yeah. So um, so in, in Texas, that's the reason I asked was so, when I went in and voted, Trump was first, and then Joe Biden was second. I didn't know if it was like a you know a heavyweight fight where it's like great champion is uh, states is gets up there first. States get to I'm, choose. I'm surprised they didn't list Kamala Harris before Joe Biden. Actually, same. Same. Uh, or, or Nancy Pelosi, for Christ's sakes. Um, <laughs> is there any shot? Let, let me ask you just realistically. Is there any shot that New Jersey's magically flips red on, on uh, election night? I don't see it that way, but you're on the you're on the streets there. You know, I uh, I get the feeling that the traditional vote is going to be very different. Um, you know, New Jersey's always been kind of a heavily blue state. Mm -hmm. uh, with a couple exceptions here and there. And it's mostly because of North Jersey, you know, North Jersey, it's in proximity to New York and yep. um, they kind of run together here in South Jersey. It's very Republican, but South Jersey is a little bit more uh, less populated or excuse me, a little less populated. So they usually dictate what's going on. But I truly think that we might see a surprise here in New Jersey. We're definitely going to see a surprise in a couple states. Mm -hmm. uh, another one that, that I'm really looking at is, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw California turn red. Ah, um, come on. So I, I, I came from California. I was there for 18 years. It's, people are sick and tired of this shit. They, they really are. They are. If, you, if you look at the enthusiasm of the rallies that are just this, the, the organic rallies that are just popping up all over this country. I mean, we had two weekends in a row. We had a plus 500 car rally come through the town, um, you know, and they're popping up everywhere. It, it's a stretch, but I think some of these traditional, these traditionally blue states may may turn turn red. Yeah, so I, I, we're just getting crushed. We're getting crushed here by Democratic policies, and it's to the point where I think people are really fucking sick and tired of it. And the only the only thing that I would think would would prohibit that is voter fraud. Uh, and I'm I'm quite certain that there's going to be an extensive amount of it. Um, Maybe, maybe not enough to to cover up the, the change in attitude here in, in New Jersey and, and and other 
similar states. Yeah. So California, look, I, I was there for 18 years. Um, California is not going, not, not a prayer for this election. I would love it to be. Look, I, uh, I'm, I would be ecstatic. We're doing a live show on YouTube. I think it would jack off live on, on air mm. in front of family members, <laughs> friends, everybody, uh, and, and risk the ban on YouTube just because if, if California turned, it's, I, it's not going to, they're not there yet, but I understand what you're saying. They're getting there. Um, I don't uh, think they're getting there. I, I, in I, California, there's no way the Hillary won by a bigger margin since anybody, uh, are more than anybody since FDR. I, no, I, I agree. There's he, no fucking way. Hear me out on this. Because I, I think with the mass exodus that's going on and people get sick of it, I'm not saying yeah. now, but I'm, I'm looking at like 10 years down the road. Yeah, um, and, and, and looking at 10 years down the road where we're at um, in Texas, I think Texas will turn blue because everybody from California I mean, it, is moving it here. Almost, it almost did with your, your gubernatorial race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's a fucking scary thought. I don't I don't think that's true. I think that this the, I think the Senate Dems spent a fuck ton of money trying to get him elected and it didn't work. And they only got within four points. Let's but they're, they're spending a ton of money now with that yeah. fucking MJ Hedgar. Um, Hager, I, I know yeah. the whatever. He, I know those goddamn commercials by like word for word now at this point. Um, but I think, look, Dallas is blue. Austin is blue. Um, San Antonio, you were there. Blue. How was blue? Yep. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at the major states, and uh, I was looking at the map last night because they broke into our local fucking shit here at 8 o'clock. I was trying to watch who wants to be a millionaire, you know? Uh, enjoy my life, dude. Try to see if I'm still smart or if I'm a fucking dummy. What were the results of that? Uh, so they broke in and no, did no, a no. special like, no, no. state election. The results of whether or not you're still smart or Oh, not. smart as fuck, dude. Yeah, I, yeah my IQ is, is through the roof. Uh, um, fake Dan, can you fact check that? Yep. Look through that up on Google. Please. Through the roof. Uh, my, my IQ is through the roof. No, he's, he's giving me the thumbs no, down. No, he knows that. exactly what it is. Um, give me the thumbs down on that one. So. He said I'm smarter than Hawking, Stephen Hawking. So, well, uh, well, like right now, yeah, he's dead. Well, so. <laughs> alive or dead. He's saying alive or dead. That's why I will exhume him. I'll exhume that body. By, by this charge, it, it yeah. says uh, smarter than dead Stephen Hawking. <laughs> okay. Did, hey, did they bury that wheelchair next to him too? Yeah, Do we have any confirmation? Yeah. Okay, they did. Yeah. Get, dig yeah. up the wheelchair too when you're digging up the body, please. They gold plated it. Now it's sitting on top and it's got spinning ice rims. I, I want it to be exact. Down, I want it to be exact and that typer thing to still work for him. Can you imagine if like Stephen Hawking or one of these famous people and we'll, like Governor Abbott like, yeah. disappeared for a couple of months and then he came back and he was like, he looked like that dude from Napoleon Dynamite, the older brother, when he started dressing in like the tracksuit and shit <laughs> and the gold tooth and the fucking big chain and he's got like spinning rims on his goddamn wheelchair. <laughs> I might vote for the guy. Maybe. He did that. I'd like to see him come back with Lieutenant Dan legs, you know, oh, just yeah. kind of pull up a pant leg and tap on the old cane. Yeah. This is the same material that was on the spaceship. Magic legs. My magic legs. <laughs> got his magic legs. Um, <laughs> what the fuck are we talking about? I know, right? Um, <laughs> let me ask you this. Do you have any deep hatred for Springsteen And uh, now that he's doing these political uh, campaigns? Yeah. <laughs> I have a deep, I have a, <laughs> I have a deep hatred for all these phony, uh, fucking entertainers, athletes, um, quote celebrities who just it, like they don't have any. Uh, I I respect anybody's political views. Mm. Same, um, same. But if you're just obviously, you know, kind of uh, feeding the system, like you know, you you see these these Hollywood celebrities and these, these uh, sports players now who are just jumping on board with every social justice movement and every, and they're, they're joining the outrage over absolutely nothing. Um, yeah. I have a deep hatred for, for anybody like that. You know, if you, if you have uh, some good reasoning behind your political views, I, I respect them and always will. But if you're just one of these, one of these show voters, you know, that, that sends out an, uh, a, a tweet about how, horrible donald trump is or whatever the fuck it is how you're going to move to canada you know i go bye nobody 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 will miss you here yeah we'll, we'll um, actually buy you nobody will miss ticket. nobody will miss your music nobody will miss you on the on the football field or on the basketball court or no, nobody no. will miss your shitty movies you know you can you can go and you know start a new life somewhere else and you know and and i would be perfectly fine with that yeah well the majority the majority of americans won't miss you either we were perfectly fine uh, running fundraisers to to pay for t plane tickets one way, obviously. Sure, for all we'll these assholes. Go me. I don't give yeah. a shit if if you're out there right now and you're saying if Biden wins you're going to leave, and if you're out there right now saying if Trump wins you're going to leave. Mm -hmm. Let me know if that works out that way, and I'll buy your fucking ticket. Yeah, yeah, we'll, you can we'll, get we'll the fuck out because if you're start, if, start up a little GoFundMe. Yeah, yeah. If you're if you're 
response to losing is to take your ball and go home then get the fuck out man. <laughs> exactly <laughs> um by the way I, i'm hearing are you at the gym currently because i'm hearing plates in the background that are being i am just, always at the gym absolutely God, we got, so, we got, same we here got some guys deadlifting over there in the, in the background same here um ask him whatever their heaviest is I, just let them know that i could probably beat it um just just pop it in back there yeah, um, we got we got a seventeen year old kid pulling seven hundred off the floor geez, today. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I did that. Uh, I think Tuesday. Um, yeah, but uh, I mean that's me. I, like I don't know on your side, but is it? Are you only seeing my traps? Or are you seeing Dan at all? <laughs> you see my co-host. Um, When's the last most, time you actually traps. deadlifted? Uh, uh, whew, uh, what is today? Friday. So Thursday night, last night, uh, no. deadlifted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it was more. Or less, it wasn't in a, in a gym per se, because um, my gym was closed. Same thing. COVID, I don't want to wear a mask because I just went out of the parking lot and just started picking up cars. Mm. And I just deadlifting we cars. Actually, we actually do that here. So anytime you want to come, we have a we have a car deadlift set up. Yeah, I, I don't know what your instructor fee is, but you know, mine's it's 55 an hour and I'll come in and do it and teach kids how to, to train properly because it's legs. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to use your back. So that's the key to a, a proper deadlift. I thought I thought it was all low back, like yeah. twisting, jerk, twist and jerk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I knew you I were. Think they covered that in a Family Guy episode mm -hmm. somewhere. Yeah, I knew you were something special. By the way, and you were drinking a protein shake halfway through this, um, and I know the one you're drinking too. It's got 11, 11 carbs in it. Uh, that little chocolate one. You might be right. Proof it. Proof me real quick, dude. Uh, what is it? And tell me who fucking lifts, dude. Tell me who lifts. What is it? Is You're it, fucking way off, dude. He's got four. Three? <laughs> is that Premier Protein? Is yeah, they, premier? Have, they have either three or four. We'll plug them. Oh, no. It's, uh, yeah, it is Premier. Ah, yeah. uh, it is Premier. Yeah, they have uh, either uh, three or four carbs. In I'm gonna, techni I'm gonna, technically, it's just three because there's a gram of fiber in there. Oh, right? dude, He's I'm going to tell my out. gym to go fuck themselves oh. then this afternoon. Oh, they're you know? loading you up on carbs. Well, you need carbs. 11, dude. There was 11 well, that's, in that's mine. A good, that's a good post-workout shake. You yeah. want some carbs post-workout. Yeah. I guess. I guess. You know who needs to work out is Bruce Springsteen. And by working out, I mean get the fuck out of this country. Hey, I'm just a small. Yeah. I'm from Asbury Park. And, uh, I'm just going to talk about how I've been rich for 60 years and now I'm telling fucking Poor people, how to live their lives. Why don't you come <laughs> suck my dick, Bruce Springsteen, you piece of shit, with your fucking bracelet. We've been doing Bruce Springsteen impressions this whole week on this show. I don't know why. I mean, look, he's got a new album out today, um, which is going to sound the same as the other. He's going to talk about the working I'm probably, man. It's, it's probably going to do terribly. I hope it does. Yeah, uh, but he's been doing interviews all week, and it's uh, it's just been pure political. You want to talk about your album? Yeah, but I really like to talk about the state of our country. And it's like, fuck you, dude. These I, guys, and these, these people are so disconnected. Like they have, they, they live in a different world. I mean, these people are, they're so isolated from what's actually going on with the bulk of American lives. And then they want to, they want to sit atop their thrones and, and tell you how to vote and how you should feel about the, uh, the political landscape. When the reality is, is that over the past four years, I think most Americans are genuinely happy with the direction that we've been going minus COVID. Yeah. Um, and and yet you have these, these celebrities crying into their their Twitter feeds and, and and into their Instagram feeds about how rough it is, and it's just it's the most disingenuous crock of shit I've ever seen. Yeah, and the, and the crazy thing is, is like um, it really came out during COVID, right? Because we kind of didn't know about some people where it was just like, all right, yeah, man, I don't I don't know what the fuck the, the, the Rock believes in or anybody else, and then. Little by little, month by month, dude, as is, is they're not shooting movies or nobody's writing them scripts or putting on makeup every day, they were like, eh, I, I want to go on Instagram and, and share my beliefs about the world. And it, it's, it's made our culture hate celebrity. Mm. I, I did a show about this maybe four or five months ago called The Death of Celebrity because that's what all of this feels like, right? Um, even yesterday, I, like yeah. I saw Paul Rudd out at the Brooklyn... Uh, voter booths handing out cookies with a mask on and all this shit. It's like, motherfucker, you're Paul Rudd, dude. I don't, don't, dude. Why is the, he handing out cookies? The, the pandering <laughs> for all this shit. They're not shit, giving dude. the blood. What the no, fuck? No, no. Uh, <laughs> might as well be giving out little cups of OJ and some apple slices. And I'm like, God damn it, dude. Not you too, Paul Rudd. Did, did he, uh, Oh, did he at least have clothes on? Or was he in black and white? No, he, he, so he, he had clothes on, but he had a mask on. It was like you, you, you could kind of tell it was Paul Rudd. Until he posed for cameras and all that shit. And it's just like, man, not you too. I liked you, Paul Rudd. Like, it, it just seems so condescending of like, 
the fancy celebrity who's got a gajillion dollars just out there serving cookies to people for voting like they're just dogs and you're giving them yeah, a fucking yeah, treat good, for rolling good treat. over yeah yeah exactly, oh yeah. way to go good sniffles boy, boy. Who, did, who did you vote for who did you vote for yeah, yeah. it's like fuck me dude you want to you want to come in put your hand on my cock and make me piss too like i'll yeah. let you do it you know what a good reward for voting is uh is you know lower taxes that's a good one <laughs> Less maybe. government intervention in your life. And yeah. maybe that's why one after another, these major black celebrities are not endorsing Trump necessarily. Some do, some don't. Lil Wayne did last night. Yeah, he did. But 50 Cent didn't. And neither did Ice Cube. But they did say, I appreciate him working on this with us and we're going to continue to do that. Whereas the other side just kind of told us to get fucked. Now, 50 Cent was like, I'm not paying them taxes. No, no, no fucking way, dude. Lil Wayne went all in last night. Yeah, um, he was. He was well, identity, with Trump. Identity politics is blowing up in their face. Yeah, it is. Uh, yes. the, the, the the left has has preyed on the um, the vulnerability um, that the, the, the vulnerability that they've created for minority communities for years. They've been telling these people that that they they're they're oppressed and they're this and they're that and they're mm. you know they, that they don't stand a fair shot and. You know, the, the world's so unfair. And I think over the past couple of years, um, you, you've seen a huge awakening. And it started with people like like Candace Owens, mm -hmm. uh, who were brave enough to come out and break the mold and start having the discussions. And it's called like wildfire. I mean, the uh, the Blexit and the Lexit communities, the black exit from the Latino or from the Democrat Party and the Latino exit from the uh, Democrat Party. That scares the shit out of the Democrats because they've held those votes upwards of 90% for the past 50 years. And if they lose that, they'll never get elected again. No, they're, um, they're fucked. Yeah. Well, that's not true, though. That's not true because there's all these fucking uh, skinny white liberals that have never left the country and never met a black person that are, are like literally burning down buildings on their behalf without asking them whether or not they wanted that to happen or not. Those people will continue because leftism i mean any any political ideology unchecked by by reason and conversation ultimately becomes radical right mm -hmm. uh the Re republicans have had a lot of debate even over the last four years because not a lot of Repu or not all republicans like donald trump there has been an internal debate about where the party is going and what it should be on the left you would expect that because they keep losing elections right mm -hmm. you would expect that conversation to be happening right now but it's not what's happening is the very first person that gets booted out of the fucking presidential nomination process gets jammed in as VP, right? And then there's uh, allusions here and there to uh, to her superseding the guy, right? Even not from us, from right. him. Right. So as these things become radical, it 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 is these people truly feel it's it's like anything else, man. It's like Al Qaeda. It's any, when they feel like they're right, mm -hmm. and that's an intractable position. That's that's no longer up for discussion we're right we're going to proceed from that from now on with no no chance of changing that then you'll do whatever you have to do to win so what they do is convince all these white children that it's racist to not essentially be racist right right it's, it's yeah insane. it's not it's no longer good enough to not be racist you have to actually what do they call it be anti-racist yeah. You yeah. Know, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. being being being, you know, not giving a shit about people's skin color is not enough. You have to you have to clearly state and post a black box on your Instagram and wear wear a little sticker on your arm to to show that you're not only do you not give a shit what co you know color people's skins are, but you have to shame anything that even comes remotely close to mm -hmm. Um, that isn't in their talking points. Right. And, and it's a lot of that comes from the col uh, from the, the university system, you know, and it starts, it starts in the, in the secondary education, but it, a lot of these kids are coming out of college and it, you look and, and wonder why they're so radicalized and they're so angry. All they leave college with is a useless fucking degree and tens, if not hundreds of thousand dollars of debt and no fucking job. And then they come out into the world and then all of a sudden they, they, they've been told that everything's unfair and they can't get a job because they majored in something like humanities or gender studies or, or psychology or something. And, and they're, they're all pissed off, bored and, and, and angry. And they're just, I mean, they're, uh, they're some of the most dangerous people in the country, I think, because you can't even reason with them. You know, yeah. And in general, half of them are screaming banshees. They just yeah. they scream and bark and yell and, and, and just they resort immediately to violence. 
which is funny because none of them even understand what the concept of violence means. Um, and it, it, it almost always blows up in their face. You know, they, they attack in these big groups, but then when they come across somebody who understands what violence is, they, they bitch and moan and complain about it. And you see that with Kyle Rittenhouse. Um, you know, they, they, they were literally attacking a kid, you know, chasing him. And he, he, he defended himself because he was well-trained. Um, and he's labeled as a, as a terrorist for it. And he's, he's, he's shunned for it, but anytime they want to do it, it's okay because it's, um, you know, they, I, I read some tweet this morning that, that, uh, they value life more than they do property. So they just destroy and, and it, they're scary because they're, there's a lot of them, you know, but I think, I think more and more they're starting to disenfranchise the rest of us. Yeah, the uh, the hard thing, by the way, if you're out there and you're thinking about majoring in gender studies, is there's uh, there's 700 of them now, so it's gonna it's, a, it's gonna be a tough course. What and a job? Tough major. Like typically speaking, if I go to let's say I wanted to take a class on the interwebs, mm -hmm. right, or I wanted to learn a new language, there's a purpose for that. Maybe I'm bored, right? But I'm not gonna spend 150 thousand dollars to satiate my boredom, right? Uh, so. The idea of going to a university or a trade school or whatever is to get skills for a specific job, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what is the job of someone who majored in gender studies exactly? Uh, fluffer. You know? Antifa. Yeah. An I mean, Antifa, honestly, well, I, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely asking. I don't know the answer to that question. I don't know if there is an answer. And if there is, it's probably a ridiculous one. Probably. It's, it's, it's a, you're not going to find anything. You, you might find, you know, you, maybe maybe you'll be an author or or you'll wind up teaching gender studies. Yeah, but people um, people who go directly from university to publishing stuff, unless you're a mathematician and you haven't lived, if you're a sociological writer, right? And yeah. all you have is uh, things you learned Four from books. Degree. Yeah. And you haven't actually experienced the world, then you don't know shit, yeah. dude. Yeah. I think which Robin, is, I think Robin they, Williams did a speech on this in some movie, right? He did. Uh, Good Will Hunting, it's yeah. called. Um, and that's why the, the world needs more authors like myself. By the way, as the sun rises, it dawns on him is, is on pre-sale today. Way to go, Ross. A champion. Uh, whatever. I'm, I'm going to buy it and return it just to fuck your numbers up. New York Times bestseller. What, I was on the list nine weeks in a row last year. Who cares? The book was number one in the world. I don't want to brag, uh, but I want to give you a chance to brag right now. This is the point in the show we do the drinking bro of the week, which is someone who has inspired you or helped you become the person you are today. Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to? Uh, I'll give the drink and bow to um, my partner, um, my partner, Frank. He's uh, he he has been instrumental uh, in, in getting us where we where we are and, and where we've been. He uh, he's the brains behind the operation. He's the one that pays attention to all the details. Uh, and I learn from him. Uh, he's a little bit older than me. He's kind of like a big brother and a business partner in one. Um, and I couldn't have have got to where I am in my life, you know, looking outside of COVID. Uh, I wouldn't be the owner of a gym. Uh, I wouldn't have been successful as I was as a personal trainer had I not uh, come in contact with him. So I'll give it to him. His last name is not Stallone. Is it, is it Frank Stallone? <laughs> No. If it Tromedia, was, no, dude, that another would be, Italian name. Yeah, it is. Frank Stallone. Frank Stallone's my business. <laughs> do you part. remember how Norm, a few years older, you know, like everything you described was Frank Stallone. You, you, you realize yeah. that, right? Do you know? Do you remember how Norm Macdonald used to always talk about Frank Stallone on the Weekend Update or whatever the fuck on Saturday Night Live? Yeah, yeah, love that. He hit on Jesse at uh on Sundance. Who at, Frank Stallone? After, he played the Range Fifteen party. You know that, right? He played a, a five really? song acoustic set. Yeah. This publicist came out to us and they were like, hey, so we have this, we have a celebrity who's going to play songs at the, the after party um, at Sundance for Range 15. And you're thinking like uh, a musician maybe? Yeah, I was thinking like fucking, you know, uh, Not Jody, Rocky's brother. J J a little, maybe a little JBJ, maybe some Goo Goo Dolls, something, you know, um, whatever tickles your fucking fancy. And no lie, Frank Stallone walks on stage with an aku, he goes pure aku guitar and starts singing. And I was like, Hang on, is that Frank Stallone? And and he's a musician. He's a singer, you say. Um, so afterwards, obviously, we had to go all in on this joke. And uh, we were in the kitchen. And I saw him slide on over to my wife. And I let it go on. Like, I looked at her and I was like, I, we're good on this. Like, I just want to say that you were hit on by Frank Stallone. Mm. And, uh, and I <laughs> do have... This is for have, me, not for you. I have photos of this, too, by the way. I'll put those up on her Instagram. I've got a photo of her and Frank Stallone that's just 
fucking priceless. Um, so if it was Frank Stallone, I was going to make a statue of you inside the studio and put that behind us. It's not him. Therefore, you will get no statue, no statue. and nothing will all be right. erect. Right. Better, better look next time. It's, I mean, I'm erect, so it's fine. You're erect, and that's yeah. all we need in this life. Uh, before we get off air here real quick, a couple more celebrities have uh, joined the Trump train. Brett Favre, uh, you know, he had his dick out. Uh, he just announced that he's voting for, he says, my vote uh, for what makes uh, this country great, freedom of speech and religion, Second Amendment, hardworking, tax-paying citizens, police and military. In this election, we have a freedom of choice, which we should all respect. For me and these principles, my vote is for Donald Trump. Uh, Lil Wayne is in there. And then Jack Nicholas, the golfer, is also in there. Uh, not to be confused with the actor. Um, I always, I always do that. I don't care who any of these people vote for, Frank. Goddamn right you don't, Dan. Couldn't possibly care less about what these uh, completely meaningless human beings. Me neither. Think. All I care about is how many plates that guy was lifting in the background. Yeah, there. we do need to know that. And so if you could send I us, I gotta know that number. Maybe send a screenshot yeah. over of what that was. Uh, send, a, send a video over. Yeah, fake, uh, fake Dan here is uh, was a uh, amateur bodybuilder back in the day, so he was guessing somewhere around six, six to seven plates. Was that your answer? No, nah, probably 405. 405. Yeah, that's so. what he heard. That's how sharp his ears are. That's a fucking bodybuilder for you. You think it was 405? Higher. A little higher. No yeah. shit. Yeah. God damn. They got another Ross Patterson in that gym, huh? Well, whatevs. <laughs> whatevs. Hey, man, uh, in all sincerity, uh, thank you for fighting the good fight. I know this is financially destructive, and uh, I'm sure your, your life and your livelihood is being ruined. Um, but it does take one person to stand up and do this shit. Go full Aaron Brockovich, and uh, we appreciate you doing it, uh, and we appreciate you taking time out of your Friday to be on the show with us. Um, where can everybody sure. go to support you uh, and help your cause if they can? Um, so you can support in a lot of ways, and I always like to stress that it's not always financial. The, the biggest and most powerful support we've had is just people spreading and sharing the story uh, and staying up to date on things. Uh, we've been able to take so many punches because we've done it in the public spotlight. Um, and that's kind of the objective is to, to lure uh, Governor Murphy and, and the rest of these politicians who think that they can do whatever they want out into the public. So as they, as they take these missteps, it'll all be um, very, very publicized. So just kind of following along like that. And if you see the story, share it. Doesn't matter if you have five followers or friends or you got 5 million, it, it all counts. Um, you can follow me on Ian Smith fitness. That's my Instagram. I'm most active on that social media account. I post updates whenever we have them, uh, in the bio on my Instagram, there's a link to the Attila Shiv website. You want to grab some merchandise. We have pretty much been surviving off of t-shirt sales and water bottle sales since they stripped us of our business license and we don't charge our members. Uh, so if you want to help out, grab some swag, you can do that too. The link to the GoFundMe is there as well. Um, and, and if you're in the Jersey area, I'm going to work out. Yeah. Or stop by the sheriff's office and call him a cunt. Absolutely. You can actually, yeah, call call uh, John A. Kemmler. Um, call Governor Murphy. Tell him what you think. Uh, not that Governor Murphy gives a shit what anybody thinks, uh, but it would be nice to flood his phone, uh, phone lines for, for a little while. Oh, they will be. Uh, as soon as this, this show airs, go to Ian Smith uh, Fitness. Um, hashtag it Drinker Bros. Let them know that you listen to the show here. And, uh, and support them. Um, repeat the name of your gym one more time. So that way, if people are in the New Jersey area uh, and they we feel are like the coming Attilus to the Attilus Gym on. of Belmar. Attilus Gym of Belmar. Belmar. Yes. Awesome. There awesome. are other Attilus Gyms. They're not very friendly to us. They like to blame us for, for the state being shut down. Ah, fuck them. You, you can go check those ones out too, but ours is way fucking better. Uh, yeah, and I bet you they're playing Springsteen <laughs> in those fucking gyms. <laughs> fuck them, dude. Fuck them. <laughs> uh, for D'Anthony D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.